Hello, I'm so glad you were able to join us for this. We are going to make clay fish bowls. I'm gonna start off, we're gonna roll some clay out. You'll see I have canvas underneath. It's to help prevent the clay from sticking to the tables or any surface. I'm rolling it out approximately a quarter of an inch thick. You don't want it to be too thin that your project starts to crack and break, but you also don't want it to be too thick that it doesn't dry properly. Okay, so I find a quarter of an inch thickness is usually just about perfect. You're going to use a circular template and add a couple spots along the top. So I'm adding right up through here what's going to be the opening or rim. It's going to go across. Tracing downward. And this will be the base of the fish bowl. Using a needle tool or if a smaller child is using it, you can go in with the wooden knife. And you're just going to cut the excess clay away. your scraps you're going to need them for your fish and plants inside okay at this point we're going to transfer our fresh bowl to a bat or board of some sort that your project can be worked on if we keep it on this canvas when we go to move it it will warp the project and let's find at this stage it's still pretty flexible and we haven't added details but it will matter later on here i just have a simple masonite board it has a nice flat smooth surface and i'm just going to transfer the project to it smoothing out some edges remember when you're firing in the kiln any edge that is rough in texture when it is completely fired, it will become quite sharp. So now is the time to smooth out edges while the clay is still soft and flexible. <clears throat> okay, from here, I'm gonna go ahead And start adding elements to our fish bowl. For starters, I think I would like to add a rim on top to give it some more three-dimensional qualities. I will take a piece of clay, nice soft plastic, which means it's nice and flexible, and I'm going to roll it into a coil. From here, I'm going to measure, and I will cut. the two pieces line up, I will create hatch lines, which we refer to as scoring our clay. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So wherever two pieces of clay meet, meet there are scores. And then I have the slip, which is the equivalent to just liquid clay. In the classroom, I refer to it as glue clay. And I just paint the slip on with an old stiff paintbrush. Take the scored slide down, and I'm going to press gently but firmly downward. 
there should be a little bit of slip peeking out on the edges. That way you know you have enough. From here, <clears throat> you can take the wooden tool and just clean up the edges nicely. same thing down below. Okay, I'm just going to speed this up as I quickly roll out clay and make it to the correct size for the bottom rim section or the foot of the pot. And then I'm just going to score and slip it into place and smooth it out and get all the edges as clean as possible, just like we did for the very top section. Okay, <clears throat> from here, we need to start thinking about what we are going to add to our little fish bowl. So for starters, let's make a fish. I'm going to take a chunk of clay. I'm gonna roll it into a ball and then elongate it some, okay? Now, it's, you need to determine the size of your fish. Are you gonna want a large fish or do you want a smaller one? This one I think needs to be a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna take some of the clay away, roll it again, make it into a ball, and then roll it between my hands to elongate it some. Now from here, I have this handy dandy little mat. It's a plastic or silicone mat that has a nice texture of scales on it. I'm going to take my ball and I'm gently pressing down into it. You don't always have the kids use part of a tool to roll it a little bit flatter. Now by doing that, we have created fish scales. Now from here, you may cut your clay into the size or shape that you would prefer. I'm going to go ahead and add my mouth for my fish now. of clay, rolling into a ball, rolling it out really thin so it's long but skinny and I'm going to once more score and slip my project. Adding liquid clay, I'm going to slip and I'm going to Gently but firmly press down. Now our fish has some cool little mouth and lips. Yeah. <clears throat> Before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and put our fish down. So wherever I'm going to put it, I need to make sure I have some nice score marks to put our slip into, and the same on the back side of our fish. firmly down. Not so hard that you lose all your detail of your fish though. Okay, so now we have our body. I'm gonna go in, small ball of clay, roll it, then I'm going to flatten it slightly. Take a little bit of water on feet. 
finger and just smooth out any edges and score where we're going to put the eyeball. Part, I'm going to take the end of a tool, and you can choose any tool you want, or you can even use the back of a pencil, and I'm going to press down into our clay to make an eye. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and start adding tail. Taking some of our clay again. You can do it this way, or if you prefer, you can take some of the rolled out clay and add your tail that way. It's up to you. I am just taking my fingers and gently forming the clay however I would like it to. I want the tail to be an organic shape and I want it to have different thicknesses and areas that protrude out more. Now in this case, I am wanting my tail to come off of the fishbowl slightly. Some students might not want that and their fish will either need to be positioned on the other side a little bit more instead of centered or it needs to be smaller in some case. Now I'm making little notations of where my tail lies so that when I pull it up, I know where to score and slip. and that's okay. I can always take my brush, clean it off, and just wipe it away. Or I can take a damp sponge and clean it off that way. Now I'm going to work on smoothing the tail out some until it's the shape and angle I want it. I'm going to add another fan. Taking another piece of clay, smoothing it out with my fingers, squishing it, forming it into the shape that I want. I'm going to go in thin it 
down a little bit more. And score. Okay, we have the tail and we have the fin. Now we're going to work on a dorsal fin. Score, slip, press down firmly, but gently. Okay, and from here you can go with tools. And you can manipulate and add different cool textures. Okay, now let's go ahead and add some vegetation. Now I'm going to start off with, I'm going to coil a small piece of clay. You could also go in with a tool and cut your designs if you wanted to. Okay, here I'm just speeding things up. You can see I have scored and slipped the vine or seaweed plant aspect down. I'm cleaning up all the edges and slip here before I start adding the different leaves and other vegetation to it. So I score and slip it, put it down, clean it up, add another leaf, and just kind of layer back and forth with stuff, adding more vines. I try to make sure that the tip of the plants or um, vine, whatever you'd like to call it, has a taper at the top so it kind of uh, has a bit more realistic quality to it and of course always clean as much as you can as you go. So I'm smoothing stuff out, cleaning up excess slip that might have seeped between the uh, clay pieces as I go. And then I will also, during this process, after I get stuff layered a little bit more, uh, go in with a tool and add details so it looks like there's little veins on the, uh, the leaves and stuff like that. This is a really good time to be working on that sort of thing. I just make sure I, I'm constantly adding detail and making sure everything is clean and neat as possible as I am working it. You want it taken care of now because it's nearly impossible to do once the clay is dry.
Okay, here I'm rolling out some little tiny balls and flattening them down so that they're easier to score and slip onto the bottom of the fishbowl because if you don't score and slip it, it will pop off if it's not done properly. And I'm making the little balls to look like rocks and pebbles that are at the bottom of the fish tank. We want our fish tank to look as cool and realistic as possible. Lots of character, lots of personality, lots of fun. Okay, I am cleaning up edges. I'm adding extra little details. Um, just making things as nice and clean and neat and smooth as possible. I will be going in and uh, adding, make it look like there's bubbles by just using the end of my tool to create little circles that look nice. And eventually I will be going in and adding all the little details of, you know, wherever it is needed to make this project look as finished as possible. Adding lines to the fins, cleaning up all the edges. It's really important to make sure that you have all your edges clean and smooth before your project is uh, completely dried and just smooth everything out. If you have any rough edges before it goes in the kiln, they will become sharper and have the potential of cutting somebody. Um, cleaning up edges and adding little details. The details can make a major difference on how your finished project looks. Going in with this wooden knife, adding little cool lines to the back fins, just making everything look as good as you can while you can. It's important to have this dry in a safe area where nobody's gonna touch it. And it's also important that it does not dry too fast. So after this is done, I'm putting it in a plastic bag and setting it aside until it can go in the kiln.